Okay, so now we've covered quite a few of these regression options. Uh, we've covered the faster but less accurate ones, the slower, more accurate ones. These last two, uh, Decision Forest, um, it's my favorite because it's a great combination of both accuracy and speed when training. So uh, let's go ahead and use that one. The output is a little bit different than you'd expect. Actually, let me give you some background on what a decision tree looks like and how that works. Wikipedia is always great for these things. Decision tree model. All right. Um, no, that's not the one I want. Hold on. Okay, perfect. So, uh, Decision support tool that uses a tree-like graph or model of decisions and their possible consequences, including chance, event, outcomes, resource cost utilities. It's one way to display an algorithm. So, in fact, that's exactly how it'll work. Um, you know, I think it's going to be easier if I just show you. Let's do that. Let's come back here to experiments. Let's close this out. Let's get rid of this uh, neural network regression here. Move my page up a bit. There we go. Let's kill this one. Decision forest. All right. Let's uh, plug that one in. Everything else is the same. Okay, we do have some methods over here, but uh, leave these as is. That's going to be a lot simpler for now. Um, go ahead and run this thing and show you the results. Okay, I forgot when I started this, I'm still on my survey data. So this is a reminder in predicting how agreeable somebody is based on their answers to all the other personality and cultural questions. So let's take a look at this. Oops, there we go. All right, let's copy a couple of these. Our root mean square error. Let's bring this over here. Let's compare it to um, decision. I guess they call it forest. Look at that, even smaller than neural network. And let's grab our R squared. Nice. Check that out. Okay. Uh, this does happen. It's more often for me, uh, more likely that I'll see a decision forest outperform a neural network than linear regression. Generally speaking, again, still neural networks are often better even than decision forests, forests but not in this case. So that one worked out really nicely. Let me show you, though here on, I think it's train model, how this works exactly. Okay, I'll give this a second. So it constructed what they called eight trees. Let's start with this first one here. I'm, it takes a while for this to pull up, so may, oh, I should have just waited, let me hit pause. Okay, so it reminds me a lot of uh, cluster analysis when we learn this, but basically how it works is it looks at every value of every variable and it looks for the single attribute value pair that furthest uh, discriminates among the data, that pushes and creates the most variance across the data. In this case, there's a survey question uh, about um, their extroversion, and those who scored less than or equal to a two, those are the people who are most different than those who scored you know, greater than two. That was a single attribute value pair that, that most differentiated between uh, people in terms of their agreeableness. So it's, think of extroversion as, as the single biggest factor, extroversion of five in particular. This survey question is the biggest factor indicating agreeableness two, and in particular, the division between greater than or less than or equal to two as the split along that variable. Then after that, the next two variables, if they are less than or equal, let's see, true, I believe is this way. Honestly, I don't remember. If they're, which one group goes over here and the other group goes over here, let's say those who are less than or equal to two go over here, the next attribute value pair that differentiates among them is their uncertainty avoidance or the response to that survey question that measures their uncertainty avoidance. And then for those who this is false for, it's their long-term orientation. Anyway, this uh, algorithm constructs several of these trees and you can see over here, you can edit these. If I click on decision force regression, I can tell exactly how many trees to uh, uh, to measure. Um, you know, we'll save that detail for later. I keep forgetting. But let's do this with a different data set. 
just so you can see it in another context. Let's go back to our bike buyers experiment. Oh, whoops, experiment right here. And let's change out this neural network regression for a decision trees, or sorry, decision forest. I don't know why they changed the name. I'm sure there's some technical definition, but I'll have to look it up. I don't know. All right, we're, we're predicting purchase bike numeric now. Let's go ahead and uh, run this one. So insert, let's keep track of this here. Insert, I think this was bike buyers or was that the Twitter data? I can't remember, we'll start a new one here. This was, as I've been doing all these videos, I've been trying to keep track of it. This was our um, personality and culture results. Let's come up with our bike buyers results. And let's compare a few of these things. And let's keep our uh, SEA right here, right here. Let's see what we got. Okay, decision force. Let's evaluate, visualize. Um, nice. Twenty um, one percent R squared again. That is way higher than anything we got with any other variable in the bike buyers. If you remember, I think so. Let's grab our SEA. All right, and let's compare that to neural network and linear regression. I'll go to linear regression next. Run selected. Okay, let's evaluate. All right, yep, as usual, much smaller number. Okay, so this was the bike buyer's data up there after all, I just couldn't remember. Linear regression. So we've already done um, naive Bayes. I'll just go ahead and copy that one in here anyway, since we have it. Uh, let's grab our root mean squared error for the linear regression. Not right there. Let's go ahead and do um, naive Bayes and neural network one more time. just to compare all of these. Okay, let's, oops, not score, let's do evaluate. Visualize, okay. Oh yeah, that's right, this is our case where neural network actually did really poorly. There's R squared, root mean square error. Okay, let's check the naive base last and fill that one in, check off that box. Okay. All right. So it looks like our best here by far is decision trees. Lowest error, highest R squared, um, followed by naive Bayes, then linear regression, the neural network last. It happens. Um, this won't be the only example. So you do have to test all of them and then uh, compare them together uh, before you make a decision on anything. Anyway, that is decision trees. Hope that all made sense. Oh, wait, there was one more thing I wanna show you. Uh, let me go back now to my decision trees model one last time. I think it'll be easier to understand how a decision forest, sorry, not trees, how it works if I show you the uh, output here once more. Let me run that. Okay, let's take, oh, not that one. Right click on train model. Let's visualize the trained model there. Let's take a look at this first tree. Okay, better pause it while I wait for it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now cars, I'm not surprised here. Remember in, um, uh, what do you call it? In our linear regressions, the biggest weight or coefficient we had was for the number of cars that they had. I think it was the same with neural network as well, if I remember. But anyway, uh, so no surprise here that having, I don't know how we have negative cars there. I wonder if that's a mistake. 
less than or equal to 0.4 cars, negative 0.4 cars. Yeah, I'm, I wonder if I've messed up that data a little bit. But anyway, that's our uh, that's our single largest, largest indicator of whether or not someone will purchase a bike. Then after that, it's after for those who do have, I think it's meant to be a small number of cars. The next question is their commute distance less than or equal to zero. If they are, if they if they have more cars, then the next factor is, do they have uh, more disposable? Oh, negative, of course. Sorry, I forgot. The reason why that's negative is because we convert all these to z-scores. So don't interpret this as a certain number of cars. This is a z-score. So um, those with fewer cars, here's how we interpret it. The next question is, do they have a short commute distance? Those who do have a short commute distance, the next question is, how old are they? Are they are they younger than whatever that amount of a z-score turns out to be? Let's go back to the top. For those who have more cars, it's not about commute distance, it's about income. Do they have enough money to keep buying bikes? Then after that, it's are they married or not? So decision tree goes through each attribute value pair and looks for the single point that that separates the data the most into those who did who do buy a bike and don't buy a bike. It's a uh, quick and it's pretty darn accurate, and so it, it's um, uh, it's easy to understand why this has become a favorite of a lot of people.